today we have to discuss chapter 5 laws of motion for a quick revision in chapter laws of motion also called newton's laws we have newton's three laws first law second law and third law and basic concepts of inertia momentum contact forces friction tension like that then applications of all this including bank the road motion on bank the road there are lots of things so we have a quick revision based on all this first we start with newton's first law newton's first law says that for a body to change its state a push or pull is needed the force is needed for making change in the state of a body that state may be a state of rest state may be state of uh, motion in a straight line uniform motion in a straight line or or that may be to change the direction the force is needed to increase speed a force is needed to decrease speed a force is needed to change direction a force is needed a push or pull is needed to increase speed decrease speed also to change direction but no force is required to make it move with constant velocity the body is moving with constant velocity then acceleration of that body is zero so unbalanced force on that body is zero so it is said that the sum total of forces acting on that body is zero it doesn't mean that no forces are acting there may be numerous number of forces acting on that body in different directions but there is no acceleration as a consequence if a body accelerates certainly we can say there is a net force or unbalanced force newton's law is that unbalanced force is measured as the product of mass and acceleration then every body continues to be in the state of rest or state of uniform motion along a straight line until it is influenced by an external unbalanced force that external unbalanced force is called net force or resultant force if net force acting on a body or net force acting on a system of particles is zero the acceleration of that body is zero or acceleration of that system of particles is zero that is based on newton's first law also called law of inertia then if no force is acting on that body that body can continue without changing its speed and direction over a long distance then such a motion is called a perpetual motion it never comes to a stop but usually in mechanics and also in daily life we used to see things getting stopped soon because of some frictional forces it is only due to that frictional forces this perpetual motion is not practical anyway the conclusion unbalanced the force is equal to mass into acceleration that's first law first law can be split up into three compartments first part is based on inertia of rest inertia is not a physical quantity but mass determines inertia more mass more is the inertia inertia of rest means what the body at rest already has a tendency to continue in its own state of rest 
until a force is acted upon it. That is called inertia or rest. A body which is at rest will continue to be at the state of rest if no external and violence forces are acting on that body. That is law of inertia. Inertia is the inherent property of all material bodies due to which it can continue in its own state. If it is that state of rest, that is inertia of rest. Dust is removed from carpet by hitting lightly with a stick without spreading the dust particles. It is so comfortable to hit a carpet with a stick gently to remove the dust from it on account of inertia of rest of the dust particle it continues to be there but the carpet moves off due to the gentle strike. Then on losing the platform on account of inertia of rust, the dust particles fall down. That's inertia of rust. Then the second part is inertia of motion. A moving body has got an inertia called inertia of motion. Moving body has a tendency to continue moving. A pendulum, a swing. Why it overshoots at mean position? It overshoots the mean position on account of inertia of motion. Wave motion needs this inertial property of the medium. Mechanical waves need an material medium which has elastic and inertial properties. All that comes here. One must run along with the moving train while jumping out of it. It's a popular question from this. It is on account of the inertia of motion. The third one is inertia of direction. A force is needed to change direction. Grinding wheel. When knife pressed against the grinding wheel, grinding wheel for sharpening knives, we use this grinding wheels. When the knife is pressed against the rough grinding wheel, the sparks, sparks, peppery, sparks are produced along the tangent due to inertia of direction. While being chased by a dog, a rabbit naturally takes a zigzag path for saving its life. The rabbit has never sat in a physics class, but it knows how to save its life by choosing a zigzag path while being chased by a dog. Like that, we also, we people also used to take a much larger zigzag path, curvilinear path, while being chased by a huge elephant. Elephant is a massive body, so has got greater amount of inertia. That's why it is very difficult for elephant to turn quickly around sharp, huge turns. This is all account of inertia of direction. So, inertia of rest, inertia of motion, then inertia of direction. That's Newton's law. That force, how to measure that force? Unbalanced external force can be measured mathematically. And that measurement is made practical and is made into a law in second law. Rate of change of momentum. Rate of change of momentum itself is that unbalanced force. Unbalanced force can be measured as the rate at which momentum of that body changes. Suppose there are two trains, two long trains. One train is faster than the other. They are very close parallel tracks. They are running with dissimilar speeds. A is faster than B, two trains, A and B. A is faster than B. And the bogies are close to each other. And if there are many people standing at the window side, sitting at the window side with packets, 
maybe biscuit packets. And they start to exchange these packets. There is a rate of change of momentum of these packets. When the packet moves from slower train to the faster train, momentum of the packet increases and decreases when vice versa. So there is a force and that force will be used as a retarding force in the faster train and accelerating force in the slower train. Obviously, both the trains happen to have same speed after long time. Mere exchange of this lighter masses like biscuit packets. It is possible from the laws of nature. Rate of change of momentum can be measured as the next force or unbalanced external force. And that can be mathematically written as F is equal to delta P divided by delta T where this force is the average force. If you go for that instantaneous force, we can use that calculus formula dP by dt where delta T tending to 0. If momentum is a constant, it is clear that external force is equal to 0. If external force acting on the body is 0, then naturally momentum is a constant of motion. That means the body moves with constant linear momentum. Linear momentum of the body is a constant, then there is no external force acting on that body. So, F is equal to dP by dt. P constant, F is equal to 0. If P is increasing, if momentum is increasing, momentum of the body is increasing. So, dP is positive, then force is also positive. So, if momentum is increasing, force is positive and if momentum is decreasing, force is negative. If momentum is increasing, force is acting in the direction of its velocity. If momentum is decreasing, force is acting against its velocity. That can be easily understood by using this formula. dp is equal to fdt. The combined effect of this large force and this small time interval is called impulse. So, effect of that large force expo experienced in a very short duration of time can be called impulse. And that large force itself is called impulsive force, where impulse is equal to change in momentum. That is called impulse momentum theorem. Impulse equal to change in momentum. Unit of impulse is Newton second. Unit of momentum is Mass into velocity, so kilogram meter per second, both are same. Dime second is also used. Gram centimeter per second is also used. Impulse is a vector. Impulse is a vector. Impulse is the change in momentum. Impulse is the change in momentum only. Impulse only depends on the change in momentum. Impulse does not depend on the time interval. Why? We may think that impulse depends on time interval, but that force depends on time interval. If time interval is too small, that force is huge. While you take a catch on a cricket ground, you used to pull your hands with the ball backward little bit to increase the time over which the momentum has been reduced from a finite value to zero. So, that time interval is increased, that force is, impulsive force is reduced, but impulse remains same. Impulsive force changes, impulse remains same. 2022 Wayne's question paper, this concept was tested. So, impulse and impulsive force, very important. What is the direction of impulse? Impulse is a vector. Direction of impulse is the direction of change in momentum, direction of net force. Direction of net force is in the direction of change in momentum. So, the direction of impulse. Newton's second. Impulse and linear momentum has 
Now both have same dimensions and units. So impulse, so inertia, all that we have revised. Now Newton's third law. For a reaction, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It is easy to describe. But there are certain qualities and certain basic ideas behind this. For a reaction, there is an always an equal and opposite reaction. Action and reaction are existing in pairs, forces exist in pairs. If one among them is called action, the other should be reaction. There is no time lag between action and reaction. If there is action, spontaneously reaction. No time lag between action and reaction. That is why one is not the cause of the other. There is no cause effect relationship between action and reaction. There are two bodies, there are two forces acting on two different bodies. Action and reaction are not acting on same body, they are acting on two different bodies. Action and reaction are acting on two different bodies, they are not acting on same body. Action is equal and opposite to reaction. If F12 is the force on first body due to second body, that is equal to minus O F21. They are equal and opposite, but they are not acting on same body. So that that cannot bring about an equilibrium to each body. But if the system is in an equilibrium, we say that net force acting on it is zero. As these two forces are not acting on same body. The force, these forces are mutual forces, they are internal forces, they are treated as internal forces. When you treat the gun recoiling problem, gun recoiling problem, gun recoiling problem, when bullet comes out of the gun, the gun recoils, when bullet picks up a speed in horizontal direction, the gun recoils. This motion is uh, due to these internal forces, but there is no external force. These forces, force on bullet from the part of gun is equivalent to opposite to force on gun due to bullet. But that forces are not acting on same body. The force exerted by gun on bullet causes bullet to accelerate caused the bullet to have an initial acceleration from rust. The force exerted by the bullet on the gun caused the gun to produce momentary acceleration from rust. But mass of the gun is much larger. That's why that acceleration of the gun was much less. Even when forces are same, equivalent opposite, force on bullet, Force on gun, are same ratio of force on bullet and force on gun, one is to one. But acceleration of bullet is much larger. Acceleration of gun is much less because gun is much massive. It is, this is why people used to say, when you fire a rifle, rifle, rifle is a long one, not a revolver, rifle. You fire using a rifle, the butt, butt means the uh, area behind, the broader area behind, but B-U-T-T, butt of the rifle is kept close to the shoulder. As the rifle's mass is not much larger, in order to decrease the recoiling acceleration, thereby avoiding the chance of a danger, the butt of the rifle is kept closer to the heavy man. For what? For increasing the effective mass of the system so that to reduce the effective acceleration of the recoiling gun. So, keeping the butt of the rifle short, kept closer to the shoulder may decrease the effective recoiling acceleration of the gun. So, gun recoiling, rocket propulsion, many applications for Newton's third law. Person walking on ground. There are action and reaction forces. 
a book lying on a table more popular example a book is lying on a table without this example this chapter cannot be produced book lying on a table the force is acting on this or weight mg if m is the mass of the book mg is the weight acting on the table and there is a reaction that reaction is acting on the book reaction is on the book and let that reaction be called n and that reaction is perpendicular to the surface called normal reaction normal component normal contact force this is the normal component of the contact force contact forces all contact forces are of electrical origin so normal force is of electrical origin weight is of gravitational origin basically there are four fundamental forces among which mg comes under gravitational version n comes under electromagnetic version so normal force is an electric force now n and mg are equal why n and mg are equal why n and mg are equal we use cartesian convention for using cartesian convention n is acting in the upward direction upward direction plus mg is acting in the downward direction downward direction minus plus n minus mg is the total force total vertical forces acting here plus n minus mg as force is a vector we have to uh, follow this sign convention in vertical direction you can give plus sign upward minus sign downward as per cartesian convention now as this platform over which book is kept is not seen to be accelerating acceleration of the system is non to be zero that is why the total sum total of all vertical forces acting on this system is zero then only we say that n is equal to mg so n is equal to mg is not necessarily true it is true only because acceleration of the system is true zero acceleration of the system is zero that happens and that is why n is equal to mg so n is equal to mg comes out to be the consequence of zero acceleration of the system okay but oh, always n is not equal to mg sometimes n is equal to we have learned n is equal to mg plus m sometimes n is equal to mg plus m we have learned n is equal to m into g plus a where n is called the apparent weight normal force peeling force of the platform the peeling force of the platform is n is equal to m into g plus a sometimes it is m into g minus a a person standing in lift lift is accelerating upward or lift is retarding downward you can use n is equal to mg plus ma likewise when the person in the lift is accelerating down or retarding up you can use n is equal to mg minus ma or n is equal to m into g minus a so when a person in the lift is accelerating upward or retarding downward the apparent weight is greater than the true weight apparent weight means the recorded weight when the person in the lift is accelerating downward or retarding upward the apparent weight is less than the true weight that is m into g minus a and also if the lift is under free fall apparent weight of that person becomes zero because a is equal to g mg minus mg becomes zero then the person feels the state of weightlessness now that person does not exert any force on the platform if the person is standing on a weighing balance on a falling lift really falling lift if the person is brave enough to watch the needle of the balance sees surprise his weight zero that is only an apparent effect true weight can never be zero true weight is zero only at the center of earth or in outer space or in satellite weight because satellite is always a freely falling body outer space not in satellite not in satellite sorry outer space 
outer space center of earth everywhere true weight zero weight is that force with which that planet attracts that's why in satellite that planet is attracting that body in satellite satellite is a freely falling body that's why a person inside satellite feels weightlessness okay satellite is a constantly accelerated body the entire force acting on this person in satellite from the part of earth is used for supplying the centripetal force centripetal force is that force which only used for changing direction the component of the force used for changing direction is called centripetal force okay now newton's third law is also let us conclude all these things based on this chapter your first law second law third law all that we have to go through read the text very well law of inertia double inclined plane perpetual motion i told you perpetual motion you leave a ball from one of the inclines on this frictionless incline the ball rises to the same height now inclination is decreased from the other side the ball tries to reach the same vertical height for which ball has to travel longer and longer distances if the incline make becomes flat then the ball will go up to infinity at the end of the universe in search of the same vertical height that is called inertia second law third law newton's laws momentum product of mass and velocity now this few more uh, examples we can use you have a ring at the end of which there is a ball there is a ball at the end of the string the ball at the end of this ring world in horizontal circle in gravity free space as there is no gravity need not mark that forces forces acting common forces acting on the body are from the part of the string tension tension is a contact force again it is of electrical origin other force is the centrifugal force that is m v square divided by l where l is the length of the string v is the speed of that ball now in it at every moment as this ball retains the same circle of constant radius we say that at every instant of motion t is equal to mv square by l then what is the net force acting on this bob we may probably think that net force as p is equal to mv square by l net force is zero it was asked in 2017 neat question paper so f net is equal to but f net is not zero f net is not zero instead Yeah, net is equal to unbalanced force equal to mass times acceleration. Mass is m. Acceleration here the body is changing its direction. If the body moves with a constant speed, uniform circular motion, there is an acceleration, centripetal acceleration. That is v square by l. So m v square by l is the net force. That is equal to t. So tension is the net force. Net force here is tension. centripetal force is also tension centrifugal force is equal to mv square by r that is equal to t so centripetal force is equal to tension net force is tension net force is not zero net force is equal to tension or mv square by r okay both correct tension is a contact force like normal contact force now you can see here that example i have already told with drawing the hands backward catching the ball newton second law newton third law all these important applications a bullet of mass 0.04 kg moving with speed given and stopped after 60 cm what is the resistive force only the direct formula f is equal to ma f is equal to m into a 
m is the mass of the bullet a is the acceleration v square rest came to rest 0 minus u square divided by this acceleration formula kinematic equation as acceleration is a constant assume it as a constant so 0 minus u square v square minus u square by 2 yes that is minus half m u square divided by s direct substitution no, accelerate. you can also independently find out acceleration as they have solved it's very important question and that force is a retarding one why we choose average resistive force the resistive force is not a constant over that interval of time for which it is stopped so we get the average force here. okay Again, Newton's third law, all that we have discussed so far. Now, this example is also important. Two identical billiard balls based on this last year, main paper questions were asked. Then the ball is reflected without change in any speed. Direction of force on wall due to each ball. Direction of force is the direction of change in momentum of the ball. What is the direction of change in momentum here? See, let us choose like this. Initial momentum of the ball is equal to initial momentum of the ball in the first case. First case, case 1 is equal to m into u, m u i cap because that is in positive x-axis given this that to be positive x-axis. Final momentum it reflects as in picture A, rebounds with the same speed. So it would be minus mu i cap, minus mu i cap. So what is the change in momentum? P final minus mu minus plus mu i cap. That is minus 2 mu i cap. That is change in momentum is of magnitude 2 mu and its direction is negative x axis. So, what is the force? Direction of force on the ball due to each ball. The ball exerts a force in positive x axis and ball exerts a force on the ball in uh, negative x axis. What happens here? Momentum of the ball or ball changed. Ball is so hard, so its momentum has not changed. But momentum change happened with the ball only. Ball's momentum change is in negative direction. So force on ball is along its change in momentum. So its direction is in the negative x-axis. Change in momentum of ball is in the negative x-axis. Now Ratio of magnitudes of impulses imparted by the uh, walls by the wall. Impulse. Impulse is equal to change in momentum. In these two cases, we can compare uh, change in momentum ratios. Impulse ratio. In the first case, as the change in momentum is greater, their impulse will be greater. Here, the ball is falling inclined. So, impulse will be less. The effect of force is less. Here change in momentum, how to find? Resolve that momentum into rectangular components. And this may be m u cos 30. This one is m u sin 30. Finally, resolve that final momentum into rectangular components. This one still m u sin 30. So, the component of momentum parallel to the wall does not change. Component of momentum parallel to the wall does not change. But component of momentum perpendicular to the wall changes and this is minus mu cos 30. Then change in momentum is only along x axis. Change in momentum along y axis is 0. That is why y axis no force. There is change in momentum along x axis. That is why there is a force on x axis. And what is the change in momentum on x axis? Final minus initial. Minus mu cos 30 minus mu cos 30. That is minus 2 mu cos 30 is the change in momentum. And if the time of impact is given, you can find the force also. 
this type of questions are important that solved example is very important now conservation of linear momentum that also we have discussed total momentum of isolated system of interacting particles is conserved in the absence of external force total momentum is a constant that is why in the gun recoiling problem momentum of bullet is equal and opposite to the momentum of gun as the force involved is only internal external force is absent then total linear momentum is to be a constant in radioactive disintegrations like alpha decay momentum is to be conserved because it involves no external force the forces involved are only internal now equilibrium uh, under concurrent forces that is to be discussed equilibrium equilibrium is an unaccelerated state unaccelerated state so equilibrium means what for equilibrium some total of all forces acting on that body or system of particles is zero meaning in a unbalanced external force that is why acceleration is zero two force can produce zero resultant if they are equal and opposite and also if they are acting on same body two forces can produce equilibrium only when these two forces are equal in magnitude these two forces are opposite in direction and also these two forces are acting on same body so what are the conditions for two forces to keep equilibrium forces are to be equal in magnitude opposite in direction they are to be acting on same body but if three forces are keeping an equilibrium equilibrium of concurrent forces that is mentioned here as a solved exercise in our textbook so let me do that here suppose there is a bob hanging with the help of a string and that string is pulled to one side pull to one side by using a horizontal force like this and this point of support is fixed three forces are acting at this knot one is f horizontal force other is w its weight other is tension t along the string at this point o there are three forces acting and all that three forces are coplanar and minimum number of coplanar forces which are of unequal magnitude which can give zero resultant is three before two forces could bring equilibrium but that two forces are equal in magnitude but these three forces can be of different magnitude can be of different magnitudes also but all the should be all the three should be coplanar and acting at the same point either away from the point or towards the point such forces are called concurrent forces can give rise to zero result let this particle this particle is of mass m its weight w W is equal to mg is one among the force one among the forces. F is the horizontal force acting. T is the tension. Let this angle be theta. Now resolving tension into rectangular components. This component is t cos theta, and this one is t sin theta. So let us choose the equilibrium of forces along x-axis, along horizontal axis. T sin theta balanced with force of vertical axis. T cos theta balanced with mg or w. On dividing, you get sin theta by cos theta tan theta. T gets cancelled. Tan theta equals f by w. So that f is equal to w tan theta. This can be applied in whatever situations where there are three forces acting on a body, keeping that body in equilibrium. Provided two among them should be perpendicular. See here, F and W are perpendicular, and the third one, third one makes an angle theta with the vertical. Third one makes an angle. Third one is T tension makes an angle theta with the vertical. Then tan theta equal to F by W. 
You can solve these two equations to find tension also by squaring and adding. Squaring and adding sin square theta plus cos square theta becomes 1. So, T square is equal to F square plus mg whole square. So, T equal to root of F square plus m square g square. For equilibrium, T should be numerically root of F square plus mg square. For equilibrium, also for equilibrium you can use, use this tangent law F is equal to W tan theta. So, the minimum horizontal force required for Pulling that string up to an angle theta is F is equal to W tan theta. Even then, the minimum horizontal force is W tan theta. You can also prove the minimum force is not W tan theta. It is much lesser than that. That is W sin theta. Minimum force required for this bob to be pulled through the same angle theta is even more less than W tan theta. And that is proved to be W sin theta you can try by yourself. Provided that force should not be perpendicular to weight, but that force should be perpendicular to the string. So that should be acting along this line. So that this angle should be that angle theta. So angle of pulling should be theta that is made with the vertical theta. Same angle. Then only that force is minimum. And that is proved to be W sin theta, you can check it. So, this equilibrium concept, tangent law is important. Equilibrium is an unaccelerated state. Any number of forces acting on a body, either towards or away, coplanar or non-coplanar, any numerous number of forces can bring about equilibrium. Total force zero. If many number of forces forming a closed loop in Graphical representation. The resultant force is zero, then acceleration is zero. If acceleration is zero, that is equilibrium. Equilibrium doesn't mean that it is at rest. If net force zero, acceleration zero, and at rest it is static equilibrium, if it is still moving with constant velocity, that is called dynamic equilibrium. Static and dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so that part is also important. This one is that solved exercise what we have done now. Now we have to go for friction. Friction. We let us revise friction. Friction. What do you mean by static friction? Static friction is established when two bodies in contact are under impending motion. What do you mean by impending motion? There is a tendency to move, but it doesn't move. A block pulled with a force of 10 Newton, that block does not move. Then we say that the frictional force is also 10 Newton. Till we increase the force to 12 Newton, doesn't accelerate. Then we say that friction is also 12. Increased up to 15 Newton, it doesn't accelerate, doesn't move at all. Then we say that friction is 15, that is static friction which has a self-adjusting nature. If applied force could not bring an acceleration, if not applied force could not make it move, then that applied force is equal to the static friction. So, static friction is a self-adjusting force, but the static friction can grow not beyond a maximum value. That maximum value up to which this static friction can build up is called limiting friction. Limiting friction is the maximum value of static friction. Limiting friction can be measured as maximum value of static friction and product of a coefficient, mu s, static coefficient times normal contact force. Limiting friction is equal to mu s times normal force, contact force. This is the way by which we measure limiting friction. Whether a block moves or not on application of forces, we can have a choice by using this one. Limiting friction is equal to mu s times normal contact force. N is the normal force. It need not be mg always. On a flat surface, it may be mg in the absence of acceleration vertically. But if there is a vertical acceleration, N can be mg plus ma or mg minus ma, apparent weight concept, what we have discussed so far. So, this is the concept of limiting friction. 
static friction has self adjusting nature limiting friction only depends on two factors normal contact force and coefficient of static friction this coefficient of friction is a proportionality constant us depends on nature of the surface finishing nature of materials us can have a value of typical value of 1 under laboratory conditions us equal to 1 for rubber and concrete rubber tire moving on concrete road can have us value 1 most of the occasions us is less than 1 but under selected laboratory conditions among few of the materials for example copper and copper us value can be more than 1 but only the chance of values us values greater than 1 is less us is commonly or popularly less than 1 the third one is kinetic friction Kinetic or dynamic friction. Kinetic friction is also measured as the product of a coefficient and normal force. Kinetic friction independent of velocity. Kinetic friction it does not depend on velocity. Once body moves, then the friction involved is called kinetic friction. One more friction is called rolling friction. It is of different origin. Rolling friction. All frictions are of electrical origin, but rolling friction is much less it is because it can be explained like this if you uh, tear vegetable tear tear vegetable by using a knife you can chip chip and vegetables are tapioca tapioca and the example tapioca only can be chipped chipped off chippy the one chitty chitty the theory but hey and then a peely the kind of Peeling is easier than tearing. A peeling mechanism is rolling friction. Okay. Rolling friction involves a peeling mechanism. That is why you see every paya, every carpet, red carpet. Like a young functions in a red carpet. Carpet to very tear energy. While each in the compress on heavy, it's very difficult. So we third the recovery rolling friction is less. That's why rolling friction is less. So, rolling, that's why that is the uh, reason behind the discovery of wheels. Rolling friction is much lesser than uh, sliding friction. So, that's about friction. Now, applications of friction, the last topic of the chapter that is motion on a curved road. That's the very important application of friction in this chapter. Motion on a curved road. You have a curved road. Like this, it's a most important topic of this chapter. Curved flat road, curved flat road, curved flat road. An object is moving on a curved flat road. The forces acting are weight, normal contact force, then centrifugal force, the tendency of the Vehicle is to skid outward because of the centrifugal force. If its speed is V, the vehicle is negotiating the sharp flat turn of radius R with at constant speed V. Then the centrifugal force acting on it is radially outward. It is on account of the change of direction in V square by R. Now, that is counteracted by friction and friction is acting as the centripetal force here because that centrifuging action is counteracted by the centripetal force that is friction. The friction here is static if the body does not slide outward, body does not, car does not slide outward, car is moving, it is being uh, driven. but not skid outward. So that friction is static, its maximum value is limiting friction. So can this car can negotiate this sharp flat turn with the maximum possible speed without skidding if that static friction is equal to the limiting friction. Then the static friction should be the value of mv square by r, the value of mv square by r could be less than or equal to the limiting friction. That is the condition for not skidding. 
condition for not skidding mv square by r less than or equal to limiting friction then what is the boundary condition what is the maximum speed over which the car can take the rough curved flat road of radius of mv square by r where v max square equal to limiting friction that is m v max square by r is equal to mu s times normal force m v max square by r is equal to mu s times normal force here is mg as the surface is flat and also it doesn't have any vertical acceleration m gets cancelled v max is equal to very popular formula square root of mu s rg so what is the maximum safe speed of a car on a flat road root of mu s rg now if we move on to a banked road banked road banked road is having an incline the things are different if it is a banked road car is negotiating the curve like this the forces are mg normal contact force other forces suppose the car is moving with a speed more than certain characteristic value called optimum speed car is taking the turn with a speed greater than the optimum speed optimum speed is that speed which causes no wear and tear of the tires tire ne daimanam undagada pogavuna characteristic speed aanu optimum speed optimum speed ne ka valiya speed poyalum cheriya speed poyalum daimanam undagum formula for optimum speed is v optimum equal to root of r g tan theta where theta is the angle of banking angle of incline angle of banking the outer uh, part of the road is slightly lifted up with respect to the inner part of the curve this engineering is called a banking okay so that let this be b let this be L, then tan theta is equal to b by l. Okay, tan theta equal to b by l. Or we can also use sin theta. Sin theta equal to uh, b divided by. Let this be a b by a. Opposite by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the road. That is the road itself. So tan theta b by l, sin theta b by all can be used for distinguishing. the slope of that road now if speed is greater than optimum speed the tendency of the uh, vehicle is to slip upward so the static friction would act downward friction is acting downward centrifugal force is acting radially outward mv square by r and this is normal force this is mg this one is friction all these forces we have marked here normal force weight friction centrifugal force these are those forces already we have marked here if speed is greater than optimum speed friction is acting downward so component of friction and component of normal reaction on resolving friction and normal reaction we get components of friction and component of normal reaction component of friction f cos theta component of normal reaction n sin theta these two components would act towards the center of that circle so this will serve as centripetal force so what is the centripetal force f cos theta plus n sin theta is acting as the centripetal force the centripetal force is provided by both friction and normal reaction that's the advantage of such banked roads components of friction and components of friction and normal force both are acting norm radially inward serving as centripetal force if so the maximum permissible speed is equal to root of rg into mu s plus tan theta divided by 1 minus mu s tan theta we have already established this result it's only a quick revision So I'm neglecting all that steps. Anyway, these arguments are very important. Steps involved in this result is also important. You can practice it for any examinations. 
Now, this is only used when V greater than V optimum. And V optimum means what if? No, we are and here that means mu equal to 0. You can substitute and justify. If mu is equal to 0, this becomes V max is equal to root RG tan theta. That same formula. So, tan theta equal to V square by RG. You want that asked frequently. And if there is no angle theta, you can get this result as root mu s rg as earlier. This is only true when v greater than optimum speed. v optimum friction will not act as centripetal force. At optimum speed during when the car is negotiating the turn without any wear and tear, then friction is uh, ineffective. That times the centripetal force is only component of normal force and it is not friction. That time friction is absent. Rod is rough still. Friction can act but friction will not act. Friction becomes ideal. That is why there is no wear and tear. Optimum speed is very important. Now we have that reference like before Christ and after Christ what we say. Less than V optimum and greater than V optimum. Greater than V optimum we use this. If less than V optimum car is very slow then what happens? The tendency of this car is to slide downward, then the friction will act up the plane. Then friction is acting up the plane. Okay. Then the speed is very less than that of the optimum speed. Okay. The most important case is this one. This one, this you have to buy. Okay. Now, we uh, did friction and these illustrations are very important. This formula, everything, common forces in mechanics, circular motion, that part we have done very well. This one, this part, the derivations, steps involved in all this are to be by factor. Now, let us continue with few more situations with connected bodies. Okay, the most important among them are pulley systems. Let us revise pulley systems. Single fixed pulley, there is only one pulley which is fixed also. A string is used for suspending it. Also as we know the pulleys that we use are massless. Also frictionless. Massless and frictionless pulleys. That is only assumption, only theory. We have light pulleys. So we can approximate this to light pulleys. We have two masses. Suspended at the free ends, masses M1 and M2. Suppose M1 is greater than M2, the forces acting on ah, M1 force is M1G, tension over M1 is T upward, string is light, very light, inextensible string we use for this purpose. Light string, massless string. Tension is same at every point, so this tension is also same. Here the weight is M2G. As M1 is greater than M2G, M1 is greater than M2, the system will have a clockwise acceleration. So, block M1 accelerates down, M2 accelerate up with same acceleration, as there is only one fixed pulley. It is the simplest of all the cases. Now, the net force acting on M1 is M1G minus T that is equal to M1A. Net force acting on M2, where T is greater. So, T minus M2G equal to M2A. Solving these two equations, you can get two important results. One among them is acceleration, which is M1 minus M2 divided by M1 plus M2 into G is most important. The next one is tension T is equal to 2 M1 M2 divided by M1 plus M2 into G. So, acceleration and tension. If masses are equal, acceleration becomes 0. If masses are equal, tension becomes 2 into M square divided by 2M. So, 2 gets cancelled, M gets cancelled, you get Mg. Okay. Here, based on this, many questions may be asked. Last year means 2022 as well as 2023 means uh, many questions in, uh, seen in different papers. Based on this, 
equations. Ratio of accelerations uh, of two different pulley systems. Okay. Absolute acceleration, absolute tension. What is the tension at the point of support? As this single string supports these two strings, T plus T is equal to 2T. So, tension at this string is 2T. Tension at the first mass T, tension at second mass is T, tension at the pulley is 2T. Okay, that tension is 2T. So, that will be 4M1 M2 G divided by M1 plus M2. That is all about a single fixed pulley system. Many questions can come based on this, including acceleration of center of mass of these systems. There we use the concept of rotational dynamics. Acceleration of center of mass is equal to M1 A1 plus M2 A2 by M1 plus M2. That formula that we have learned, displacement of center of mass. Or what is the velocity of the mass M1 after 3 seconds. Or that we can use kinematic equations, V equal to U plus AT. A you can substitute here. Based on that, many questions can come. And this device is sometimes called Atwood's machine. Atwood's machine. Atwood's machine is a single fixed pulley system where there is only one pulley which is fixed and two masses connected at the end. Okay, so in this chapter, mainly we focus the forces, connected bodies, and circular motion, banged road. Optimum speed, inertia, uh, inertia of thrust, motion, direction, momentum, impulse, Newton's second law, Newton's third law, all this. Common forces in mechanics, contact and non contact forces, gravitational force is also possible without a contact, so it's a non contact force. Tension, friction, all needs contact, so called contact force. Contact and non-contact force. Okay. Contact force when we discuss. Let me tell you one important question that was asked in 2022 mains paper. There is a block. There is a block. And that block is of mass m. Block is of mass m is sliding down an inclined plane. Rough inclined plane with uniform velocity. A block of mass m is sliding down on a rough inclined plane of inclination theta with uniform velocity. What is the resultant contact force acting on the block? Resultant contact force. What is asked? Resultant contact force between block and the incline. So, one condition is given that the block is moving with uniform velocity. The forces are, the downward force is resolving mg down the plane mg sin theta. As the velocity is a constant, it should be a frictional force which is of same magnitude but in opposite direction. No other forces seemingly there. And that is kinetic friction. So, mg sin theta is equal to frictional force. That is clearly mentioned. Now, resolving mgs into other component, you get mg cos theta here. From where you write n is equal to mg cos theta, no other forces along a line perpendicular to the plane. So, n is balanced with mg cos theta. Then as there is no acceleration, n is equal to mg cos theta. Okay, only as there is no acceleration, n is equal to mg cos theta. It is not because of n is equal to mg cos theta, no acceleration, that is incorrect. So, acceleration of the block along a line perpendicular to the plane is 0. It is because n is equal to mg cos theta, that is absolutely wrong. Okay, acceleration is 0. That is why n is equal to mg cos theta. It is not because that is n is equal to mg cos theta. So, mg cos theta and mg sin theta. So, what is the resultant contact force? Resultant contact force is the resultant of contact force friction which is parallel to the surface contact force, normal force perpendicular to the surface. Two contact forces 
one parallel to surface friction other perpendicular surface normal force angle between the two is 90 so resultant will be formed by the parallelogram of vector addition so this would be the resultant and the resultant contact force is along this line that is square root of fk square plus n square so very that's a very good question that is root of m square g square sin square theta plus m square g square cos square theta that becomes mg so resultant contact force is mg normal contact force is mg cos theta normal component of the resultant contact force is mg cos theta parallel component of the resultant contact force is mg sin theta resultant contact force itself is mg okay with that we wind up the discussion uh, of chapter loss of motion we will be soon waiting with the next chapter work power energy thank you